All right, all right, all right. I ain't going to say we are back, back, back. We're just here for a quick, brief session. So as the weekend comes in, nears tomorrow, Friday, I thought it would be only right to drop a jewel regarding my book, No Friday Foolishness. So we're still in. This is the second one, so this is not a this is not a show. It's just a quick session. Um, we're gonna be looking at relationships. Statement number two. Um, and that and that comprise of when folks always look for the negative in you. Sometimes you just have to keep moving forward. And here is my explanation as the controversial counselor. I would not get in the habit of listening to this crap for too long. If a person only sees negativity in you, they will minimize any good thing you do. They will be better out of your life. Unless you're keeping them around to prove them wrong or you're stuck on stupid. What are some of the reasons you keep negative people in your life? Okay, so we all know that everybody has some negative individuals in their life, whether it's siblings, parents, coworkers, friends. There's some reason why we decide to keep them. As much toxic toxicity they bring to our world, for some reason, people keep them. They can't let them go. Now, some people use the excuse of, well, you know, I've known this person all my life. Well, that is my brother or that is my sister. But we all know the precursor to a lot of illnesses is stress. So, the more you keep these type of individuals in your life, the more chances are you will become ill with something. I'm Jessica Mays. Thanks for joining me tonight. The only one who joined me. Well, this is my fault. I just decided to go in here. Usually I have planned sessions and I send out invites. So it's okay. I'm going to play it back and people can respond to it and commentate and share so that doesn't intimidate me because if I can reach one person, that's all that matters. So I'm gonna give you a quick five reasons why some people just got to have those negative people in their life. Number one, you are a pleaser, driven by negative self-talk. You worry that you have no value unless you're doing something for someone, meaning that you like the people please. And unless you have someone to please, like if you have these negative people in your life, then you you always have someone to please. So therefore, you, you hold on to these people because you're the type to try to make sure that you can correct things or get things right. So you, and, and some people, utilize that in relationships. They like people that's toxic or weak-minded to keep them around because they want to be that, that that's, they want to be a people pleaser. So, which isn't a good idea because sooner or later you take on more than you asked for. Meredith Hickerson, thanks for joining me. So remember, number one, some of you are simply just pleasers. You're going to keep negative people around because you're trying to please them and trying to somewhat solve or kind of fix their problems and you get off on that. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're a fixer. Again, dealing with problem solver. You're someone that feels that you have the answers, you wanna fix it, and you wouldn't have any clientele or nobody to fix unless you have these negative individuals around. Um, you can't leave things alone. You're always trying to problem solve. So no matter what, like if, if someone had everything together, that wouldn't do you no good because essentially it all may tie down to you having some form of 
low self-esteem that you need to have these people around because although you're not at your greatest height, but you're better than them. So you get off on that and that helps you feel better about yourself. Mm. It's a lot of things going on. Sandra Princess Brown, thanks for joining me in my quick segment of No Friday Foolishness, where I'm talking about um, what are some reasons you keep negative people in your life. Remember, this is not no full-blown Monday night show. It's just a quick thing, motivational purposes uh, to get you prepared as you head into the weekend. Some no Friday foolishness thoughts. The lines are open for you to call in if you would like. Um, and that number is 605-313-5375. Code is 268328. And that's above in the description. So your fixer. You're a pleaser, you're a fixer. And those are some of the things that, the first two reasons. Did somebody come in? I don't think they did, but. All right, number three. You're always comparing, worried about what the next person has. Work, education, finances. Toxic, pe toxic people love to take advantage of your lack of self-respect. So again, what the correlation is that people that keep negative people around essentially are people that may have low self-esteem. So you're comparing, you're trying to outdo the next person that you're worried about, oh, if they got a better job than you, oh, do they make more money than you? Or um, do they have a higher degree uh, than you? And with you doing that, you want to you want to somehow be the shining star so toxic and negative people understand that so they take advantage of you because remember you want to be the top dog you want to be the person that can heal and fix the world and in, in that case those negative people will stay around you because they know that you're looking for validation Tamika Dean, thanks for joining me tonight in the Counselor's Corner as I break down one of my No Friday Foolishness thoughts. So that's number three. Number four, you feel like an imposter. Toxic, negative people like to take advantage of you because you are too busy showing that you belong. You are smart enough and good enough. They take advantage of your insecurities. So again, you're like an imposter. You want to be something that you're probably not, unfortunately. And remember, this is not all, but it's just a case, um, a case for some people who keep negative people in their life. So you want to look good in their eyes. You, you want, to, like I said, you want to be the shining star. So again, negative people know that. So if they can take advantage or get something out of you, whether it's time, money, or whatever they're looking for, they know that you're gonna always be around and you're not gonna let them go because you need them to validate who you are, which is kind of sad, very sad, that you need people that's wearing you down to potentially stress you out but because you have low self-esteem, you need those people to remain in your life. Um, and finally, the fifth point is you're a perfectionist. You pride yourself in being a perfectionist. You're sending the message you will do anything to keep from letting someone else down. Toxic people are quick to manipulate you into doing all kinds of things in the name of perfection. Um, basically, in that case, you need to get your self-esteem up. You claim to be a perfectionist, and we know that nobody's perfect, but that's something that you hold your cards high on, that you wanna look like you're this immortal individual, that you have all the answers, have all the solutions, and you can make things better. So what do they say? Well, 
I know I can get anything out of this person and I'll keep milking the situation because they're out to prove that they are perfect and they can kind of save the world. Not a good idea, people, but that's, um, you know, why some people do. And we wonder why, like, why are they with this person? Why do they continue to have this person um, as a friend? But essentially it boils down to needs that that per particular person may, you know, may need validated. So again, the five points are you are a pleaser. That's why you keep negative people in your life. You're a fixer. Um, you're always comparing yourself um, with others to make sure that you're shining or want to shine just as much as they are. Um, you feel like an imposter. You want to be something that you're not because you have to maintain a certain image to prove that you are worthy of just as much as anybody else. And by number five, you're a perfectionist and you live your life like you're a perfectionist because you know that you need these certain people to kind of kind of bow down to you. But when you think they're really bow, bowing down to you, they're really outsmarting you because they're getting what they want because they know that you thrive on that. So again, people, no Friday foolishness. Second thought, dealing with relationships and on why some people keep negative people in their life, negative partners, because of those um, five reasons. Now, like I said, this wasn't going to be a full-blown thing. Feel free to type in some commentary. Um, you can call in if you have something to say regarding that but I'm not on here long. I just wanted to come and make those points. And like I said, I was going to be doing this per periodically with my book, No Friday Foolishness. If you haven't got it, get you a copy. It's all that. The premier self-help reflection book dealing with 80 statements involving relationships, friendships, family, work, um, ment uh, emotional health, education, loyalty, mistrust, child drama, and the dating game. Now, where do you find all of that comprised in the book? Where do you find it? If you find it somewhere, let me know. But the premier book, No Friday Foolishness, get your copy. It's out there. It's been doing pretty well for, um, you know, an independent self-publisher. They say in a lifetime, independent self-publishers may only publish, may only sell like a hundred books. And that's total. Well, I always supersede that. I said my goal before, um, going into 2020 was to sell at least a hundred copies of this book, No Friday Foolishness. Guess what? I beat that mark. I beat it. Now it's time to pick it back up. Because you know, sooner or later, I'll be moving on to the next task. So I'm about to sign out. Yeah, still quiet. People got to get used to this process of me, you know, coming on, doing um, doing a quick segment for five or 10 minutes. Um, but that's what I'm going to be doing, along with my um, other platform when I'm hanging out with Herb. And of course, that's more inter interactive because... It's me and him, then you have callers call in. I opened up the lines tonight for people to call in, but you know, I guess even for this, I probably have to send out invites and get people um, going. That way they can kind of put it down or they can get reminders. But it's, this is just you know, a test trial, trying it out and see how it goes. Because the one thing I do understand that people don't want to be looking at videos and stuff that's an hour or some long, sometimes that takes place with my regular weekly uh, discussion in the counselor's corner because people come in and they have a lot to say. Jen Aberhart, thanks for joining me in the counselor's corner. So again, um, why do people keep negative um, 
people in their life. Number one, you're a pleaser. Number two, you're a fixer. Number three, you're out there comparing yourself to others, trying to outshine them. Number four, you're an imposter. You're trying to be something that you're not to please other people, to make it seem like you the top dog. So in order to be a leader, you have to have followers. So negative, toxic people, manipulators, like to roll with you because they know they can manipulate you and get stuff out of you because you want to be that you want to be that man you want to be that woman and number five you're a perfectionist you live your life and you that's your trump card that you have all the answers the solutions to everything you're a perfectionist and you have to have people to you have to have people's to prove that notion with, and those are usually the negative and toxic people. So that's it. Feel free to chime in. I'll share the polls. Feel free. I'll do a watch party and feel free to um, chime in. Um, I'm out. Uh, so hello, happy Friday Eve. Happy Friday Eve. So um, I'll talk to y'all soon. Maybe see you on Monday with the next segment in the counselor's corner and hanging with Herb. But for now I'm out, just wanted to drop this jewel before Friday. Remember, no Friday foolishness. End your week with solace, peace, tranquility, and enjoy yourself. Now, not everybody's off on the weekend, but I know in the school um, setting, um, we're off. So I like to close my week out with less drama as possible and going go to the weekend reju to try to rejuvenate myself, have fresh thoughts, have my wheels spinning and be ready to tackle the next week. Not everybody has uh, those jobs, but anyway, you just never wanna have a stressful Friday like that. Anyways, you wanna have some peace and usually some people are off either Saturday or Sunday. You have one weekend day off unless you're out there trying to get that money. Then that's, you know, that's something different, or you off every other weekend. But that's neither here nor there. So I'm out. Don't want to belabor the point. Stay tuned for the next segment and No Friday um, Foolishness. And uh, see you on Monday. Everybody have a um, peaceful weekend. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.